Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. And this is my buddy Puccini. He keeps me company in the craft room. We've got a very subdued Puccini today. He went to the vet for some of his shots and so he's not feeling 100% I don't think. He's been doing lots and lots of napping. <laughs> I have a very fun card for you today. I have uh, taken up the stamp set new in the catalog this time, Seaside Bay. And so I've got uh, a little card here and I, I love it. I hope you enjoy it as well. Let's just get started. Here is my card. And I made it a thank you card, but it could easily be a birthday card or hello or just because it could be just about anything and on the inside I've done a little bit of decorating as well and um, I uh, cut this bird from the designer series paper and, and the designer series paper is this which is um, the package is called um, by the Bay 6x6 six six Specialty Designer Series paper, and some of the pages are foiled. The back side of this one has fish. Now, as the result of this is 6x6, six six, you can't get quite as many birds out of this paper, and uh, only three, and there's four sheets, so it is 12 birds that you can get out. Now, I used one big one, and then I used a bunch of little ones, and my little ones I stamped and die cut. And I also stamped, let's see, I stamped and die cut two of the larger birds. And sandpipers, which is what these are, do usually have darker brown um, markings. In fact, they're not all just like this. They include some much darker brown um markings on them and uh, I did this one uh, and and I colored these little birds to match this which was in the designer series paper and these birds are never quite like that but they were so pretty I decided to use it anyway so I cut a second bird and I think um, I'm not crazy about this I have to work on this some more to get some different color markings on here so that he looks more like a real sandpiper and then I'll do something with that. So on this one, I'm going to use some of the material that I did to make this bird look a little bit like this one. And so first thing I did was I used my blender brush. I'm gonna bring out a scratch paper here because this is going to be, um, well, not completely messy, but maybe a little and I wanted to make sure I didn't have any color on this and this one here has such a rich kind of blue and all you have to do is take your blender brush and just move a little bit of that ink around and magically you get this kind of uh, navy look on the bird. So there, that's the first part. The second part has to do with um, using my Petal Pink blends. And see my dark Petal Pink, but maybe this lighter one will do what we want to. And, oops, wrong end. <laughs> um, get some of, yeah, that'll work just fine. Get some of that color in there on the bird and maybe kind of go over those legs a little bit and that beak a little bit to get maybe a bit of an orange highlight. The other thing was I used a bit of pool party um, in the blends also to get this kind of uh, pretty blue in there and I added some just kind of here and there and I did the same thing 
with my little birds. So I've got four little birds. Well, actually, I've got quite a few little birds. <laughs> a couple of those I had started to do that brown color, and those will all have to go together here. And let me see if I've got four here that are uncolored. Yes, they are. And we're going to do that same thing to these birds. I'm going to use my blender pen and move some of that blue ink around on on these birds. While I'm at it, I will do a little bit of the petal pink on here just so that all of my little birds match. And I'm not going to put whole bunches of that on there, but just a touch here or there, and then follow that up with a little bit of this pool party for the brightness of the blue. And we'll get a little bit of that on here. Then, I don't know, it's just me, but I don't like birds without eyes. So, um, in fact, I forgot to do this little guy. I use my black marker and I give these little birds very distinctive eyes. I just, they don't seem right to me without eyes. <laughs> So there are my little birds for this, three for the front and one for the inside. And um, then what we else we need to make this card is we, I used a basic white base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored and folded at four and a quarter. Then I have two pieces of basic white. The first one is four by five and a quarter, and we're going to build this piece on top of there. And then someplace here, I have one for the inside. I have a balmy blue piece that is four by five and a quarter for the outside edge, and then a piece for the inside that is three and three quarters by five. And here is my three and three quarters by five. So that's what's going to go on the inside. Then I have two pieces cut. I have this piece and it comes from this piece in the seaside bay and I have cut this piece. You can use either side. On this one I use this side so on this one I decided to use this side and this is four inches by three and a half. And then this is a piece of Sahara sand that is four inches by three and a quarter. And these are the pieces that make up my sand and sky in this piece. Now you could use, I mean there's a limited number of these pages in here as well, but you could easily use your blending brushes with the balmy blue to get the same kind of an effect. Okay, now what I did here was I just tore this and I put a couple of pencil marks on here. Let's see. Yes, I put a pencil mark. I don't know if you can see it or not, but um, I put a pencil mark down here, a little less than a quarter of an inch down, and then I put one over here and that mimicked where I wanted the tearing to happen. And what I'm doing is tearing this paper towards myself. And the reason that you do that is so that you get this little rough edge. And on the back side, it just doesn't show as much. It just looks messy. And this way, you can get your paper down here. And I'm aiming for this little spot over here. So I can make my paper, oh, go back and forth and dip down and it's like it's on a little um, bank of, of um, sand and eventually I want to get down to this point over here. And there is my torn paper edge for this piece. And this one is, is looks like it could stand to come down just a little bit. It's going to fit right in here and 
cover this part. I use the By the Bay dies and stamp set. These are the dies, and I use the short grass. I use the three sandpipers. I use the large sandpiper, and I use two little shells, the smallest of the shells, and this, this uh, die cuts out both of those. And then there's another die, and I've misplaced it, I can't find it. It cuts out this uh, shell here. And here is the stamp set. And so I used this, this one, I used these, and I used the large bird, the three small birds, this shell, and that's it in the stamp set. I have my shell here, which is on this side here, and then there's one on the inside. And so I've got those already cut here. And I went ahead, since the birds were done in Night of Navy, I did all of my, I did these shells also in the Night of Navy. And I only need two of these. I have my small grass cut, and I think I ended up, I tried the taller grass, but it was just a little bit too big for the scene I was making. So I cut three pieces of this short grass, one here, one here, and one here, and then I used just the stamp grass. There is the grass that I used, and it's from the Friends Are Like Seashells. We have this one, and in fact, I used this one and this one. Um, don't know that I really needed this one, um, but those are the ones that I used. And then the thank you also came from the Seaside Bay. Bay. Thank you for everything, it says. All right, so I think we can start putting our scene together. This is my sky, and it should fit right across this piece. And because this is designer series paper, I wanted to give it a little bit more stability. So that's part of the reason that I'm putting this on here. So what I'm going to do is place this on my card front here, on my four by five and a quarter panel. And get that put on here. Okay, there we go. Now, for this piece, I'm going to bring back my scratch paper. I'm going to move my birds and shells and grass and things a bit out of the way. Because one of the things that I wanted to do, and this is another one that I used from here. I keep finding one more that I used. This one was a little sand. Here is my sand. And because this is Sahara sand, I wanted to use something where the sand would actually show up a little bit more. So I used crumb cake. So I'm just going to add a little bit of sand detail in the crumb cake. And I wanted it to be a little bit darker so that it showed up a little differently. And you can, as you can see, I'm moving my stamp around so that I get um, some sand grains sort of all over the place here. The other thing that I used was Wink of Stella. And if you remember or think back on a time, or maybe the sand is right outside your door, <laughs> um, there are little pieces of glass in the sand. And so there's little sparkles in the sand. So while I was at it, now this doesn't look very good because it's wet still, but when it dries, it just adds a little bit of sparkle to the sand uh, for what we're doing. And I'm just going to continue to add that in a very random kind of way so that the sand sparkles a little bit as it would in real life. So I'm going to let that dry for just a minute. 
Um, and in the meanwhile, what we're going to do is work a little bit on the inside. I have my crumb cake here, and I've got a blending brush, and I'm going to get that off there a little bit, and I'm going to add some sand color to the inside on the bottom of my card. Kind of across the bottom and maybe up a little bit on the side. I over stamped that a little bit. Usually what you want to do is get the excess off first before you put your blending brush on your piece, but for the inside of this, I'm going to have a few things over here, so maybe I can camouflage that just a little bit. Or I can add some more and make it look like that was my intention all along. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So there is my sand there. Now, I also need um, some some grains of sand here as well. And I'm going to move that around a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing on this uh, with the Wink of Stella. This one is not completely dry because I can still see an awful lot of the Wink. So, but I think it's dry enough to go ahead and put on the card. So I'm going to add some seal to the back of this. And add that to my card front. This is going to cover this whole panel of white so that we won't be able to see any of it but it'll make this very sturdy. So now I'm going to go ahead and in this same kind of scheme, I'm going to stamp um, my uh, greenery here. And for this greenery, I used old olive. And that was what I used for my cut grass as well. I used the old olive. So I'm gonna move these things out of the way here. And I decided to add some grass right down here at the bottom of my card. And added it all over there. Then a little bit right up here as well. There we go. There we go. All right. Then I went ahead and put in some of these grass pieces and I put the one up towards the top here uh, just flat on the card and I'll use my dot runner for that. and get that placed right in there. Then I put my couple of my birds up on dimensionals and I put one little bit of grass right over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And I'm gonna have it go off the card just a little bit, just to add a little bit of interest because we still have the card base to go. Now I'm going to put some dimensionals on some of my birds. Okay, I think I'm ready to put this part together. 
I'm going to move this grass down here and I did raise it up on dimensionals and then I put my bird here so that he was a little bit in and behind the grass so I'm putting him right in there then I have my little birds I have a raised one right up here another raised one right back here and then this little one down here is going to be in the grass but right flat to the card and I can disguise the bottom of that grass by doing that. Next I did cut some of these white shells and one of these, I think these are called conch shells. To give these a little different dimension, I did color these with Wink of Stella. And put plenty of Wink, in fact I went over them a couple of different times. These little shells I just put down here on the bottom and I did use the shimmer paper to cut these out so they started with a little bit of sparkle. I'm going to lay that one down there and then put this one right across here and then add this other one right underneath this one right in here. There we go. And there is my scene. And then the next thing we need to do is uh, our sentiment. And I have a little piece of Sahara sand that is one inch by two inches. And then I have my stamp that says thank you for everything. And I did that in the crumb cake on this Sahara sand piece. And you could do that a little bit darker. I suppose we could do it in um, Night of Navy just to do something a little bit different. But I'm going to stick with this crumb cake here. I'm going to get it nice and inked up and see if I can't get my stamping done right here. I'm going to hold that to let the ink sink in just a hair. And there we go. I've got a nice thank you. Now I did use my stamp with the sand back in the crumb cake just to lightly add a little bit of texture um, to this piece. And then I did go around the edge of it um, just to give it a little bit of distinction with the crumb cake and a dauber. Got a nice edge to it. And then I have a little piece of our linen thread. And what I did was I put two pretty good sized dimensionals on the back of this piece. Actually, I think I'm going to put on three because I'm going to be sticking this string to the dimensionals. So there we go. And then this string wants to curl anyway. So I just put a piece of it like across here came up and around it wants to make a loop that's fine with me and maybe a loop out this side and this strand hanging down here which we might be able to fray a little bit and um, see I think I ended up with another loop down here and again just twisting it a little bit encourages it to do that and 
maybe another piece kind of hanging off the edge down here. There we go. And there we've got our thank you. And I think we can take one of these edges and just fray it a little bit by putting our poke tool in it and separating those threads a little bit. I think it makes it look a little bit more interesting if it's not got a perfect end on it. All right, and so now I'm going to put this in place right up here. Right up along that edge. And if you've got too much of this linen thread and it makes it feel like your dimensionals won't stick, you can always just add a glue dot on top of that dimensional and it won't give you any more height, but it'll give you a more firm feeling that this is where it's supposed to be. Now, let's go ahead and do our decoration on this piece. Or maybe on this one we can put a die cut one. There we go. We'll just change it up a little bit. And we'll put a die cut grass right in here. And you can see what we did here. Um, that would need to come down right down here to the bottom edge. There. And then our last little uh, colored bird. We'll add a little bit of snail to that. And put that little bird right down here like this. And then adding a white shell and a conch down here. Add some glue to that. And then add some glue to my other shell here. Maybe somebody will tell me what kind of shell this is. I see them all over, but I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's called. I grew up where there was no water. <laughs> so that's stuff I don't know anything about. So there's the decoration for our inside. And um, you could turn this into a birthday card and just no time flat. All right, so now we have our piece of the white base and we're going to add some seal to the back of it and add that to the front of our card. I just think it's so pretty. And then add this to our balmy blue piece. There's some embellishments that come with this suite of products, and they are these beautiful flat back, flat adhesive back pearls, but they're very iridescent, just as pretty as they can be. And because they're kind of flat, you can probably get away with putting one in the front. Now, on these shells down here. I did add some wink of Then I took one of these little pearls and added it just to the edge of this sentiment. And that's how I finished it off. Isn't that just pretty? I am really tickled with this project. Um, I love the, um, I love sandpipers. <laughs> I know I didn't grow up anywhere near the water, but I just love them. And um, this, I'm happier with this sentiment. The stamping is a little bit darker and the rim, the edge around the rim is a little bit darker. And I think adding the real grass on the inside is an improvement as well. 
So, and you see this is just about dry now, and those little bits of Wink of Stella in here um, look okay. In fact, I'm just going to go in and add little bits more of it so it looks more random. And there we go. That is the project, my project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. I do so appreciate it. And if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, well, I'd love to be your demonstrator, or you could join my team. Exactly four days left in the month for the join offer and for celebration. So I hope you take advantage of it to get a few more free things or to join if you've been thinking about it. And I'd love to have you on my team. And then starting on March 1st, there is going to be some online exclusive products available. The first of them is going to be something called Hello Irresistible. It's a sweet collection that has stamps and dies, and it's a floral. And um, then it also has some beautiful paper and some, um, some loose frosted dots. Then there's uh, some um, new 3D embossing folders that'll be released and uh, some gilded 12 by 12 paper. And then another stamp set that is basically numbers and letters. And that's all going to be available on March 1st. I'm going to try and have this up on my blog so you can see what it looks like. Um, and, and then uh, as it becomes available, put out some announcements. Um, and let's see, there's always the $60 uh, prize draw from me um, on a monthly basis. Um, and all you have to do to put yourself in the drawing is put an order of any size on my store, lbedinger.stampingup.net. Uh, and you can get to it through my blog, www.inkandingenuity.com. Um, and this one, uh, there won't be a kit because there's too much stamping that has to happen here. So I'm thinking also of adding a category, just cards for sale. If you'd like to have this card, I'll make up five or six of them. And again, once they're gone, they're gone. Um, and that should be up within... A week or so and I will if it can't be in a kit available for for you to purchase and my kits are pretty affordable they're ten dollars for enough material to make two cards um, and um, if it's inappropriate for a kit then it might turn up as a card for sale and so uh, you could still get the idea and then decide after you look at it if it's a stamp set and die set that you want to have so um, that's it for me. I will be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye!